Howdy folks. Tonight we are reacting to Amber's most current vlog. I can't remember the title of it, but she posted it on July 9th, 2022. And she clickbait spilling tea, but she just ends up taking Twinkie to the vet, going to the bookstore, getting her nasty Starbucks unicorn pops, and then telling us that she started and quit Jenny Craig yet again. Um, as always, before I get into this, I would like to state that everything I say is based upon my own personal experience and my own personal opinion. You should always do your own research and come up with your own fucking conclusions. Also, don't harass people. It's fucking ignorant. And you'll probably go to hell for it. Okay, now, without further ado, let us dive into this dumpster, shall we? Hello, good morning. So is it really morning, Amber? Does anybody really know what time it is? So we're sitting at day nine. Are you sure it's even day nine? Okay, it's not even morning, it's afternoon. Yeah, again, are you sure it's day nine? Um, God, I'm surprised I'm not covering myself with long sleeves because my excoriation, I hate that word. You should probably make up another word for it then if you hate it so much. You could, you know, because you is a quirky girl. Disorder has been affecting me clearly and you can see it on my arms and I hate it so much, but... So you should do some of the therapies for it. Like take up a intricate hobby or do mindfulness therapy or, I don't know, make little scratch art card thingies. I can't, I don't know, I can't. You can't what? I can't let my insecurity stop me from living my life. You shouldn't let this disorder stop you from living your life. You shouldn't, you should work on correcting the disorder, not just giving in and accepting it and then being mad when other people don't accept it or think that it is distressing. You know, so kind of just gonna accept it for what it is you shouldn't accept it but people you need to stop making fun of me about it like damn i can't control it <laughs> nobody is making fun of you for it amber i'm not gonna sit here and say that i read all the comments and i know nobody ever makes fun of you for it but i do read a great deal of her comments section in her videos and i rarely see anybody ever make fun of her this this disorder that she has i see people make fun of um the one that she periodically gets on her face from you know just having acne in the same pore every time that they call it scabitha anyway um but nobody ever really makes fun of her for it they just you know most of the time they they express how distressing it is and a lot of people that suffer from the same disorder try to give her advice and tell her you know to pick up hobbies like knitting and crochet and bead weaving and something intricate you know what i'm saying <laughs> anyways so my weigh-in um i use both scales amber over there playing musical scales my new and my old but I'm just going to start logging my weight with the new scale because it's like because it's a lower weight and it, it's like it's less threatening to her because it's lower than the old scale. But um, I would be concerned about the five pound difference if Amber still has those little dumbbells that she bought last year um, and hasn't dropped them off at the thrift store or let Becky have them, then she could plop like one or two of them on the scale and match up the number on the dumbbell like five pounds ten pounds to the number on the scale and if it doesn't match up you calibrate that bad boy and then you got an accurate scale i didn't spend eighty dollars just to let it sit there and still me use the old one she has to say the price but also i would have thought that that bad boy would have cost it a little bit more because it does go up to 700 pounds 
And that seems like it's got to be a hefty piece of kit, you know? Doesn't make sense. So, um, I did weigh myself three times on my new scale. and I She really, really is playing musical scales over there. I'm just going to, like, take the overall, like, middle one. Thankfully, it was all 491 point something. It was 491 point... That's not really a thankfully. Zero... 491.4 and 491.2 so the middle of that is 491.2 but I could just take the heavier one 491.4 and if I do well I mean like a couple of ounces is negligible in your state sweetheart so take the higher one that that means I stayed the same from yesterday so and that's not good either I mean did you go to the bathroom yet at least not bad, not bad. Um, and and what did you do all day if you stayed exactly the same calories um, or same weight? My bad. Actually, we're about to take Twinkie to the vet because, as you guys know, she's been on this medicine um, that she takes for her. I guess like small dogs get like messed up knees or whatever. Small dogs um, have a whole lot of health problems. Um, I do not agree with breeding small dogs like uh, miniature pinchers and chihuahuas and pugs and things like that because they all end up getting arthritis and having miserable sad existences at the end of their lives. And also I've watched a couple of videos of little tiny English bulldogs trying to jump up on the couch and falling flat on their faces and on their backs and it looks like it really fucking hurts and that's a miserable life i don't like small dogs they make me sad and twinkie is old unfortunately she's really not that old man my waffle is almost 16 years old and he runs around the house like a boss i mean outside around the house even though she acts like a a, a spry chicken what I had to cut that part out. I couldn't help it. It was stupid. Anyways, Twinkie's wonderful though. She's super healthy. It's just like... No, she's not, Amber. She is a morbidly obese chihuahua. She is not healthy. And being that fat is what is contributing to her joint tissues. That's the only problem she has is her knees. So um, we're just going to get her blood taken to see how the medicine is treating her. And we're gonna get a refill on that. I'm pretty sure because we have no more. Um, and then my girlfriend does trim Twinkie's um, nails frequently. Um, I don't, in the fear of like I don't want to hurt Twinkie. But <sighs> this is Amber's dog that Amber loves like a best friend and her child and her baby and would do quote unquote anything for Twinkie yet she will not learn how to properly trim the dog's nails and she will not take the dog for a walk more than a little tiny bit out front to go poop and pee and no exercise and she will not properly care for the dog's nutrition but she loves and cherishes this dog so much you know um, when bill and i first got our first cat the very very first thing i did was call the veterinarian because i was a dog person growing up as a child but the very first thing i did was call the vet and ask them what we needed to do for this little kitty before I brought her in to have her checked out. And, you know, I took the list, I went out to the store, I got all her things, and I stayed awake and stayed with her and comforted her for the first week that we had her until she warmed up to us. And anyway, it's neither here nor there. Let us continue. Amber doesn't really love her animals or she would learn how to care for their nails. But I think we're also going to have the vet, you know, just like touch up on those as well. If Jade actually trims her nails properly, frequently, then the vet will not have to touch up on the nails. Just a typical vet visit. So, so I want to show you guys Twinkie and her seatbelt. I was waiting to see this thing again. This thing 
is not a safety harness for when you're driving for a small dog. This thing is to keep a large breed dog from running around in the back seat and trying to get in the front seat. This thing, in a car accident, this thing would send Twinkie ping-ponging back and forth all over the back seat and she would not be safe. It would, it would actually harm her even more. They do make proper puppy and kitty safety harnesses for cars that are kind of like a carrier with softer insides that holds the animal in place a little better it's like tighter in there and it straps to the seat really 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 well and in the event of an accident that thing would keep the animal cushioned and in one spot and safer than you so anyway that is not a fucking safety harness that is a horrible horrible choking hazard waiting to happen She's still able to lay down. She wasn't a move around kind of dog anyway. She don't look like she's happy being in the car. She'd probably stay in a comfortable position and just stay there, scared out of her mind. Oh, she's so sweet. She has no idea she's about to go to the vet. Twinkie Toysies. Oh my gosh, she's scared. It's okay. Here. Poor Twinkie. Let me get her out. Literally back right out of it. <laughs> Amber, why don't you have that dog in a proper carrying case? Come here, Bobby. Do you want me to get her? Do you want to just come in? Will you just carry her in for me? I know you're curbside, but. Aww. Twiggy was scared. So my girlfriend is going to uh, take her in. Why not you, Amber? Why don't you take her in? You love her so much. She's your baby girl. She would be much happier to have you in there with her. Pookie usually doesn't get scared like that um, of the vet. So that was probably because you and Becky usually go in with her. Weird. I didn't have my mask with me. Thankfully, she has hers. But wait, 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 wait. You're using not having your mask as a reason that you're not going into the vet with Twinkie. You could borrow Jade's mask, put it on, and then go in, and Jade can stay in the car. That's, that is an absolute option. You know, when Bill and I had to deal with Waffle's eye issue. One of they got in, one of the cats got into a fight with them and Waffle almost lost an eye. This was like two years ago. Anyway, we we had to rush to the vet and it was right at the right at the beginning of the lockdowns and um, they just started the mask mandate and we did not have masks and we didn't even know about it until we were there that we had to have a mask and so on and so forth and call ahead instead of, you know, going in there and checking in. So what I had to end up doing was rummaging through a bag of clothing that we were going to donate and tearing apart a bunch of things and constructing a mask. And I had, all I had to work with was Bill's crappy doll ass pocket knife and like my own wits. <laughs> So I, I tore apart um, a couple of t-shirts and I yanked the drawstring out of a out of a pair of swim shorts and I made us both masks and they still only let one of us in so I went in anyway I made us masks and we went in and then we handled waffle and went home you know there was no question of oh my god I can't go in and then just giving up no that is not how it works if you love that animal and you really, really mean it, then you do what you have to do to go in there with them. Jade is not that pet's owner. You are, Amber. You should have gone in without Jade if you had to. You have to wear a mask when you go in there, which is understandable if you do end up going in there because it is curbside.
so i want to do an update and just say that twinkie is okay mm, my poor baby i'm just so upset because like i wish i would have had my freaking mask it, it this makes me upset that she's using on and have a mask when jade could have loaned her hers and what about germs they make out they breathe the same air they live in the same apartment they have the same germs if amber borrowed her mask it wouldn't be a big fucking deal because i wanted to be the one to go in there with her but yeah she is fine um she's never reacted that way before so that definitely shocked because you made her go in with a stranger amber that's why she reacted like that us um and it's like i didn't bring my mask because our appointment was curbside so mm -mm. so you still bring your mask because you have to what if they have to call you in and there's a terrible emergency and they need to talk to you face to face instead of on the cell phone where you can misunderstand poor baby but she is on the way home and why don't you just have a mask in your glove compartment or the little middle compartment between seats you know i have two or three in bill's car and i'm sure he's got like a bunch of them hiding in the back seat and in the front seat and in a bunch of different compartments and shit Did, why don't you have extra masks amber um we be prepared stopped and got some starbucks so i'm going to show you guys what we got she didn't forget to stop for starbucks um oh i almost just spilled and she if she had to go in for it and didn't have a mask then she would probably borrow jade's i don't know if you guys know this but i just learned it that when dogs have allergies they lick their paws they lick their paws for a whole lot of reasons ever sometimes it's anxiety sometimes it's an injury sometimes it's allergies it's not always allergies and you can get your dog the little antihistamine vitamins that taste like chicken livers that they will love you for and think are treats. And in fact, so we both got a grande lemonade. Calories on this. Why do you go to Starbucks and get a lemonade? It's a coffee shop for to the getting of coffee and frappuccinos not lemonade and stupid fruity drinks it's so low hold on uh, 110 calories i got that's not so low for a drink man this has zero calories in this delicious ass diet pepsi loaded with caffeine and no sugar two unicorn pops they're 106 why do they look like cat heads 60 calories each Ugh, so worth it. My girlfriend's gonna have some. That's not worth it. They're so, so tiny. And I hate white chocolate. And they totally, totally look like cat heads with like a vague semi unicornish kind of outline drawing. I, I don't get it, man. I don't get what's so good about those. Some of one. So, <laughs> I'll be taking off the calories on that regard. Damn. Just because you gave her a taste of your, your little cake pop, you're going to remove the calories. I would just put the full calories in there. And then at the end of the day, you'll be at a deficit and you won't even realize it. She got the... And oh my God, you might lose weight. Um, turkey pesto sandwich situation type deal. That's usually what I... It's just a fucking sandwich. I get to and I was going to get it. Um, but I really wanted the impossible sandwich which was also less calories by like a hundred so i mean the bottom looks kind of toasted but it still kind of looks microwave too i mean since i was getting the cake pops i was like Ugh. so this is 420 calories it has doesn't look appetizing at all amber cheese eggs it looks like packaged yellow american cheese that comes wrapped individually in plastic eggs <laughs> and then that just looks like textured vegetable protein in the shape of a patty and a white square i don't know man i like my food to look like food not like 
basic shapes made of clay. Just one egg, I'm assuming. Rarity, oh, it's no. Oh, it's pretty rarity. Oh, baby girl. And um, obviously the impossible sausage, which is meatless, obviously. Nasty. See, that's why she's putting it back in the bag because it's fucking disgusting. So, <laughs> she thinks she owns the place. That is my first meal. She does, man. She is a cat. They do. They own everything. Of the day. Oh, I thought I turned it off. Her Don't need that. Sunbathing. Does that feel good? Man, leave her alone while she's trying to relax. <laughs> Does that feel good? So good. She's literally sunbathing. That is what cats do. It is part of their job description. Oh. <laughs> she literally just looked like a hot dog that you just flipped over when you're grilling it. She said, plop. I don't know why people hate so hardcore on lunch in bed or dinner in bed, but they don't bat an eye when it comes to breakfast in bed. I'll tell you why, Amber, because dinner and lunch in bed is associated with illness, you know, like you have to eat in bed because you're too sick to get up or you're too infirm to get up. And it's also associated with laziness and gluttony. And also because eating in bed is just generally unfucking hygienic from you know speaking from my own personal experience because I do happen to eat like a fucking slob anyway and breakfast in bed is usually something you do for a loved one as a gift like on Mother's Day or their birthday or some holiday or an anniversary that is why breakfast in bed is not frowned upon because it's just like I greet you with my love and these pancakes that I made from scratch. So for this meal, we are eating in bed and we're watching 90 Day Fiance. It was that pine nuts. Blech. So we ordered from this Italian place where I've had the pesto pasta before, which is the one to the right with like the pine nuts and stuff. And I love it. But then the one to the left is like this spicy ground sausage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mushrooms and cream sauce and both. I had half of both, and if I have to choose the mushroom and spicy ground sausage, by far, hands down, the better one of two. So what she's saying is she had half of both, and then she liked it, the spicy ground sausage one best, so she finished that one off. But I do like them both. I'm just going to say that. The pesto one is amazing. Um, that's no, it's not. It looks like it's got pine nuts on it. Actually, the first time I've ever had pine nuts. Oh, yeah, ew. Was when I had that pasta. So, yeah. Um, oh, my God. Now I'm, like, salivating, doing this voiceover, talking about this pasta. Because when I tell you, when I tell you that mushrooms in there. You know what? I do envy Amber quite a bit because... I mean, not only only about this thing, only about this one thing, guys. Um, because I've never like had a orgasmic moment about food. I've never been all like, oh my god, this is so wonderful and good. It's never made me moan. I've never like described something and then salivated before, during, or after thinking about it or talking about it. It just, I've never experienced that kind of ecstasy over food. And, and that's one of, that's the only thing that I'm really jealous about Amber. Cause you know, I, I just don't enjoy shit that much. And that pasta was so good. Anyways, okay, I'm rambling. I'll see you guys in like two seconds. I got, it. now what are we doing going home? Oh yeah, I cut out the uh, Barnes and Noble bullshit. She got a whole bunch of books, she touched a whole bunch of things, and they have candles and soaps and bullshit at Barnes & Noble now. Up to you.
Homesies. Homesies. Okay, so I'm hungry and my natural instinct is to order McDonald's. Of course, because you don't cook. But I'm not going to. I'm gonna And how come you don't have a bag of frozen chicken nuggets in your freezer to throw into the air fryer? You could just like throw six of them in there and be happy and satisfied with your six dank ass chicken nuggies have um this and not a big old uber eats bill couscous it's roasted garlic and olive oil it is so easy couscous is so boring and sad and those near east seasoned sauce kit package thingies are also boring and sad they don't have enough flavor in them for me easy to make i am i am an incredibly picky eater it literally takes like five to six minutes um, and the only ingredient you need is this, obviously, and a little bit of butter. What about the water? So, okay. One, four. See, okay, here she goes using the dry measuring cups to do liquids again. Um, the reason there are two different types of measuring cups, children, the liquid one is usually clear and made of glass so that you can see through it and eyeball the line and the level of the fluid in the glass and the solid material one or the powdered ingredient one is so that you pack it all the way in and then level it off with a knife or whatever and that is how you get your measurements. If you put liquid in a dry measuring cup, then you're not gonna get an accurate reading because you're gonna probably lose some from the sink to the pot, especially, you know, the way her kitchen is set up. I'm sure she lost a few drops here and there. And sometimes that shit matters and sometimes it doesn't. But yeah, don't, if you, if you can find the proper tools, then fucking use them. Oh, here we go with the country crock. This stuff is not butter, and that is not a tablespoon. That is a table utensil for eating with, not measuring. I'm also supposed to put in the contents of the spices. I know you have a tablespoon. I've seen you use it before. Here she goes using the big ass poultry scissors to open packages. Okay, so I thought I was filming. Such riveting content. But it turns out I wasn't. I forgot that I turned it off. But I poured the couscous in there. Uh, now I have to... You're not supposed to leave it boil like that when you put the couscous in. You're supposed to turn it off right after you put the couscous in. Or you're going to overcook it and either make it dried out and nasty or turn into a big soggy clump. Remove from the heat. I have to add a lid though. Man, she is breathing directly into that microphone. It's literally so easy to make. It took me like five seconds. You have to fluff it. Where's the double entendre, Amber? Where's you coming on screen and going, hey, fluff it? Or, or wait a minute, you probably don't watch pornos, so you don't know what that word means. There is the finished product. That looks so sad and boring. How come she didn't hack up an onion and throw it in there while the water was boiling? Or, you know, saute it off to the side and then dump it in there after she put the couscous in. Where's the garlic salt? Where's some garlic paste at? Where's the little chopped up green onions to make it pretty? Mm. I love the texture of couscous. 
I don't. It's kind of yuck. Okay, so like I'm eating dirt. Oh, I'm eating again. Um, I'm struggling tonight. I'm not gonna lie about that. You need to get some hobbies, honey. Struggling today in general. Um, when I start scrounging for things around the house that I normally wouldn't eat, that's when I know. I'm what like cotton balls and dust bunnies? What are we talking about here? Kind of just eating to eat. I feel the sense of loneliness currently. Well, where's Jade at? Where's Jade if you feel so lonely? I thought that she was loving and supportive and ready to help you whenever she, whenever you needed her. How come you're feeling so lonely? Where are your friends and your family? Sometimes when I cater to that, I just eat, um, so. Why don't you call your mom, Amber, and just have a conversation with your mom. Ask her how she's doing, you know. Call your mom, see how she's doing. Ask her about things going on in her life and get her to talk about herself. And just listen to your mom and appreciate her, her presence instead of, like, eating and feeling lonely and being miserable and isolating yourself and putting yourself in your own prison some more again all the time i'm eating one of my jenny craig me that looks like a chicken cutlet but i totally know it's not meals it is 250 calories and it's just a loaded baked potato that doesn't look like a loaded baked potato it just looks like a whole bunch of mashed potato with some yellow shit and some white goo on it um i put a serving of ranch i guess that's what the white goo was on here which is 120 calories so i'm currently sitting at damn the nasty sauce you put on it is half the calories of the actual entree that that's yeah 2892 calories i'm not really a big fan of cream sauces or cream dressings on my salads i'm a oil and vinegar base kind of girl also have which i have not logged yet um i'm pretty sure these are 80 calories but i might have two of them it is quest i don't know if you guys have ever heard of quest bars but yeah i have they're protein bars and they're not really very delicious apparently they have little candy bites as they call them you know what amber amber honey honey really really russell stover and whitman's makes really fucking banging sugar-free chocolate they even Whitman's even got a big old fucking sampler box of sugar-free chocolates. You could get one of them bad boys and then have Jade be like an actual supportive girlfriend to help you battle your addiction. And she could be the one that hides the candies and divvies them out to you when you want something sweet. And she only gives you one at a time not the entire box or like you know a handful just one at a time that is how jade could be helpful and supportive amber and also those are nasty just go for whitman's or russell stover be nice to yourself man don't eat garbage it's gooey caramel flavor with peanuts no thank you and see gooey caramel flavor that means that there's no actual caramel in it so it's all gonna be artificial caca food. I just feel like I need something chocolatey. So go get a Hershey's Kiss, man. Again, one Hershey's Kiss ain't gonna fucking kill you. And if you don't chew on it, you can sit it in your mouth and let it melt and savor that bad boy. And then you'll get your chocolate fix. More than likely, I'll probably be eating those. So add another 160 calories. So I'm at over three. That's lame. That's. That's just a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of food for such dense calories. That stuff's not meant for people that are actually trying to restrict 
and diet when they have binge eating disorder. She should be, really, she should be eating high volume, low fat, low carbohydrate foods. Like nice, nice, diverse vegetables. Good salads, lots of greens. I That last vlog where she ate the salad that was just all three or four servings of croutons and some crappy lettuce and nasty ranch dressing she she could have added so much stuff to that like chickpeas and chopped radish and dare I say tomato or a spoonful of salsa in that mixed around and put salt pepper oregano and basil in there and she just she limits herself and that is why she has an addiction to fast food because she does not have a diverse palate and she does not want to fend for herself thousand calories today um. she wants people to just serve her give her what she wants let her be whatever she wants to be don't make fun of her don't cite anything negative about her health or about her impact on the environment at this size you know don't say anything to her just let poor little amber live her little life i know i've gone into the 3000s one other day it takes me two and a half days to eat 3000 calories amber during this series, don't feel the greatest about it. Ugh, I don't know. I'm also having a Dr. Pepper and cream soda, zero sugar. Ew, I don't like cream soda. If you guys have never had this, it is amazing. Um, I don't like Dr. Pepper either. Chef's kiss. And now that I can make my own ice with my new ice tray that I got, Amber, you've always had the capability to make your own ice. And I find it hard to believe that you and Becky have lived in that apartment for three years. You've lived in that apartment for almost three years. And you did not get Dollar Tree ice trays. It's the same plastic material, but it's a different shape and a hell of a lot cheaper. And you could have had ice the entire time. Um, I can like create my own fountain drink anyway. Are you trying to tell me, Amber Lynn, that you have been spending 15 to 20 dollars on sodas from McDonald's delivered to you by Uber Eats because you didn't have ice trays to put ice in your soda? leave it on the counter to melt for 45 minutes and get flat and then drink it is that what you're fucking telling me amberlyn reef i'm gonna eat this i don't even know is it even gonna taste good like probably not it's jenny craig and it's got a fuck ton of nasty ass ranch dressing on it so it's probably gonna be nasty as fuck you know since you're not following jenny craig anymore you could have put some cheese or a little bit of cooked ground turkey with that or real sour cream and some other seasonings like a little bit of again chopped green onion would have jazzed that up a bit but you're not you're just being miserable and you don't even know if you really want to eat that now that i've rambled <coughs> Do I even want this anymore? <laughs> See, now, if you have the question... Sorry, guys. I was coughing. If, if you have the question, then you don't really want it. You don't really need it, and you should not eat it. I don't even know. Oh, my God. This is the story of my life. Let's do a taste test together. Have you guys... No, thank you, Amber. I have had that before, and it is not delicious. I've been enjoying these, like, genuinely speaking. Not really. It's, it's, they're very disingenuous vlogs. Like, have you been enjoying this series? I hope so. <sighs> Amber is eating a twice-baked baked potato smothered in ranch dressing with a soup spoon. Mm. 
But yeah, the tea about Jenny Craig. That you have never, ever been able to maintain it. You quit within a matter of days every single time you started. That's the tea. <laughs> there is no tea. The tea is you keep repeating the same things over and over and over and over and over again, expecting them to have different results when you know for a fact that you hate it and it is not for you. Stop spending money on it. Stop acting like it's going to work for you. Stop telling us about it. Just stop fucking doing it. Um, it was recent. Learn to fuck how to cook. And then you won't need prepackaged foods or takeaway. And this is a horrible thumbnail. Very recent. Huh. Um, I wanted to try Jenny Craig again, so I went there, you know, did the whole meeting thing. Got of course you did. The food. Spent a fuck ton of money. And then I just realized, like, that you hate it, and you've always hated it, and it's a mistake, and it's always been a mistake. It's not for me. <laughs> again, this is... You've realized this every single time you've been on it, and you've been on it three year, three times in the last at least four years that I can remember, but it's probably been more. I'm not going to be successful doing that. And you're not going to be successful doing that because you set yourself up for failure every single time you start something new. My psychologist knows I'm not going to be successful. You know what, Amber? Your psychologist... Um, wouldn't know that you're not going to be successful at it and they're not going to tell you oh I told you you weren't going to be successful at it because they're not going to tell you that you're not going to be successful at it the, yeah, I don't believe that you have a psychologist judging by what you did in Nadir's chat and judging by the just the simple fact that the woman said that you're an empath tells me that she is not a legitimate licensed psychotherapist because that is just new age mumbo jumbo anyway doing that it's honestly just another i hate to say it kind of fad diet situation it's not really a fad diet they do have really really good advice if you buy their tapes or not their tapes they don't have fucking uh, cassette tapes anymore but if you buy their their instructional series there's a lot of really really good advice their food is not that great but again you can supplement with your own really good vegetables you eat fresh vegetables and lots and lots and lots of them you'll be cool except for kale kale is fucking disgusting And instead of wasting the food, might as well eat some of it. My girlfriend's ate a couple things from it too. And she's thought it was okay. Like, it's nothing special. I'm not going to lie. No, it's just nasty, cheap, frozen dinners. They're like, they cost pennies on the dollar to make. Of course, they're not going to be good. Their food is super low calorie though. So that's probably why it just doesn't feel like oomph. It doesn't have that oomph. You mean it doesn't have fat and carbohydrates in it. It's got plenty of seasoning, and seasoning doesn't have much calories in it. Parsley, sage, rosemary, thyme, and oregano don't have very many calories. I mean, you'd have to eat like a bushel of it to, to have a handful of calories. Anyway, let's go. To it, if that makes sense. I don't even know what I'm talking about. I'm that is a great big spoonful of twice baked baked potato on a soup spoon that Amberlynn Reed is about to shove into her mouth. I'm gonna go eat this. Bye. Hello. So, honestly, I just feel sad right now. So call your mom or call your friends or call your aunt or talk to wifey or go listen to a creepy pasta and forget about how you feel. It's just such a hollow feeling. And I've done a little bit of crying. I'm going to cry some more. I cry every fucking day for one reason or another.
And it don't make you weak. It just means you're a little sensitive. Crying does not make you weak, even though sometimes it's portrayed that way, but... This morning, I was crying my eyes out at a little Monta Coon video. He's one of the kitty cat videos that I watch. Um, because he had surgery and he's all healed up and rolling around in the sun out on his porch today. And it made me cry because he feels so much better. It kind of helps. And I'm also trying to remind myself, like, there's so many things that I'm grateful for. You know what? Every single day that I wake up on the sunny side of the dirt, I am grateful. And during moments like this, I just have to Let's see. make lists and just be... She is grateful for her mom, her fur babies, for music, girlfriend, aunt, YouTube, rain friends, grass, doctors, clothes, water, roof, journaling, and poetry. Thankful that I'm breathing. You know, I have my mom in my life, my fur babies, my girlfriend, my aunt, YouTube, you guys, a roof over my head and water. I'm going to go journal about these feelings, listen to some music, and hopefully just have a calmer night because I am tired of anxiety anyways Amber you really really should take up a hobby and you really should be talking to your therapist about your level of anxiety and maybe be put on a different prescription to help you handle said anxiety thank you guys so much for enjoying these videos I really didn't and I will see you guys tomorrow for episode 10, which is the season finale. I love you guys. Bye. You know, I really am beginning to not care at all what Amber does to herself at this point. Um, she just wants to be a victim. She just wants to have people do everything for her she just wants the quick fix she wants to wake up one day and be skinny and then still eat whatever the fuck she wants and not care and that's fine that's never gonna happen for her and i accept that now <laughs> and she should just i mean if she's gonna accept that then just say she's gonna accept that but what I am concerned about is her animals. And it's fine to say that you love your dog to bits and pieces and you want to snuggle it and play with it and cuddle it and such. And that's fine. That's fine. That's a good, healthy attitude. But with pet ownership comes a great deal of duty and responsibility. Um, when you own a pet like a small breed dog you have to have special carriers for it you have to be ready to take care of an animal that is bound to have arthritis and bound to have some congenital issues um, and part of that is learning how to trim its nails in the proper way and it's not hard to learn how to do that twinkie seems like a calm little girl when you're not speaking to her in a high-pitched voice she'd probably sit real pretty while you nip the tips of those nails off and you don't have to go very far to the base of the nail you can get your vet to show you how to do it they got tons and tons and tons of youtube videos showing you how to trim a dog's nails and they get all close up with the camera and show you exactly how to do it and even tell you the tools to get the exact name brand and everything so learn and just do it and take care of your pet if you really really love your pet and I'm flabbergasted that she used not having a mask as an excuse she could have totally used Jade's mask and gone in by herself but she didn't. She just chose to stress Twinkie out by making her go with this new strange woman.
that she probably doesn't really like. Anyway, um, I'm tired of this. I'm going to go into my art room and clean a little bit and maybe hopefully try and get something started or even better yet, something finished. Um, they got a long, long, long stint of uh, artist block. I mean, I could start things real good, but finishing has been really fucking hard for me over the last year. Um, anyway... I love you guys. I hope you have a good night. Do something creative. And uh, be the energy you want to see in the world. Bye.